need it! Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, what do we want? Monster Hunter. And when do we want it? Now. Which is sort of a weird thing to say, because once you reach a certain point playing this game, it starts to feel more like Monster Hunter soon, or Monster Hunter eh, maybe later, I guess. That's not to say that the game isn't fun, that it isn't good, but there are some very specific walls in the game that could very easily stop you from playing it if you don't understand them and how to deal with them. Or, quite simply, if you don't have the patience, honestly. Quite simply, this game just gets it's genuinely difficult for a couple of reasons as you get in further, and so today is going to be all about how to get over that hump, some general practices to help make these humps less noticeable, but also some solid tips for if you wind up stuck there. Because the biggest jump that I've seen in this game is from 4 star to 5 star monsters, quite specifically that one urgent quest that I'm sure anyone who's gotten here will agree with, when you first fight Legiana. The recommended defense for Legiana at its base 5 star level is 318, which doesn't sound crazy until you realize what that actually requires as far as your armor pieces. The way that defense works in this game, in comparison to most Monster Hunter games, is actually a very tight scale. In normal Monster Hunter, 30 points of defense is not negligible, but it isn't generally life or death in the vast majority of situations. In Monster Hunter now, if you are 30 defense below the recommended number, you're pretty likely to get one shot during the hunt. Again, if it was normal Monster Hunter, it wouldn't be a big deal. You fail a hunt, you try again until you get a good dent dodging the attacks that are coming your way, learn the patterns of the monster, work out your strategy, then you get that big satisfying moment where you overcome the challenge. But in Monster Hunter now, healing is a pretty limited resource. You get 5 free potions a day, which caps at a stock at 10, and past that, all healing that you get is either from leveling up your HR at specific breakpoints, from different events in the world, or from, well, spending money. Because that is the big one here, and it's the big way that this game is profitable in general. Because the amount of healing that you get for free is fine, sure, but if you come across a monster that is an urgent quest, meaning that you have to do it to progress, and it's hitting you for about 2 potions worth of healing each time it does, that is an undeniable wall. That is a big wall, and that's a nasty wall that's asking for you to drop money on the game. So let's talk about that mid-game difficulty bump and what you can do to surpass it without pulling out your wallet in the first place. The first and biggest thing that I want to say is to consider your weapon always. This can be broken down into a couple of different concepts, but the first to consider is the situation. Yes, we all have our favorite weapon type, we all have the ones we prefer using, but some of them are just simply more long long-term efficient than the others, by which I mean there are weapons that rely on perfect dodges to get the most out of their damage, on perfectly timed parries, or on guarding to get their actual damage done, which will give you chip damage, and all of those will simply make you need to heal more than you would otherwise because of the gameplay style. Sure, don't get me wrong, bring your favorite weapons for the big fights, bring them when you're just having a good time, but you want to actually think about what you're bringing when you farm random monsters, especially if you're doing a longer session. If you're looking for parts or just clearing the area, a general tip that I have is to use either sword and shield or light bowgun depending on your personal preference between the two. Element is exceedingly strong in Monster Hunter Now, and these are two of the best weapons in applying it as they attack extremely quickly. Another big thing that both weapons have in common is consistency. Light Bowgun does the exact same amount of damage with every single shot that you fire, provided that you hit the same location, and of course, this does change with different ammo types too. Sword and Shield's main combo does lots of damage, it doesn't lock you in animations ever, meaning that you can dodge more often than most of the other weapons can, and you can get the majority of your damage in by just tapping the screen as much as you can outside of the those dodging moments, and you'll really just get the job done. The point of this is, well, conserving potions. These big urgent quests, these particularly rough monsters, you may well take a dozen attempts on, if not more. Each of those attempts will probably cost you a couple of potions, especially if you're doing them back to back, they'll probably cost you up to four potions per attempt. At 75 seconds per run, you can get through a lot real fast. With how limiting a resource that the potions are, four potions per hunt will eat through your collection really just way too quickly. And that's why I recommend having a solid farming weapon so you can kill the random things along the way to get to these big walls without forcing yourself to use the healing as much as something like longsword or greatsword would need to simply because of the way that they play. The second part of this then is, well, it, patience. While potions are your main source of healing, there is also a passive healing function in this game. Every 30 seconds or so of real world time, you will heal one, which is obviously a very small amount, but it means every 
hour or so, you can heal from one health up to full for free just by, well, not hunting. If you get to one of these walls, the smart thing to do if you are convinced you need to kill it with the equipment you already have is to wait for this natural healing in between your attempts so you can conserve your potions for later. Because you always have to remember that while this is your current wall, the current challenge stopping you from progress, it may seem like a massive foe and you'll give anything to take it down as quick as possible, it's not the last foe. There are more monsters after this. There are harder fights, and if you use all of your potions to get through a five-star monster, you'll definitely find some even bigger walls coming up after that point. So, patience is absolutely a virtue. On a similar note, but a different way of applying that concept, stop and think if you should be throwing yourself at your current target over and over at the moment. If it is an urgent quest, that means it won't disappear. Yes, it blocks your story progress, but you have to weigh the risk. If your defense is 30 points too low, if your best attempt where you're hitting the monster non-stop only puts you to 25% health, the problem may well be not your personal skill as a hunter so much as it is your actual equipment. With a 75 second timer, the harder fights in this game genuinely give you no room for error. Lose 5 seconds getting hit, game over. Lose internet connection for 5 seconds, sayonara. This is unless you have really spent a lot of time just farming your gear up so that those minute time differences don't matter. The recommended defense number on a monster really is important. Every couple of points of defense closer to it that you get, the damage you take goes down significantly. As for your weapons, a similar concept applies. Upgrade your weapons. Always, always upgrade them. I can give you specific recommendations for weapons and armor, and I will be in a little bit, but the biggest piece of advice is if you get stuck at a wall, just farm upgrades to your current gear. Yes, once you get even to grade 4 weapons and armor, the resource cost to upgrade them is just nuts. Dozens of this random small monster part, 15 of this random rare ore, it, it gets crazy, but it is achievable without throwing yourself at an urgent quest wall that is just killing you over and over and costing you money. All it takes is time and maybe some target farming by walking around the neighborhood looking for specific monsters. On which note, when you are farming for monster parts to make and upgrade equipment, there is a really big thing that we need to touch on and that is part breaks. In regular Monster Hunter, if you're trying to make a specific monster's equipment, you know the parts that you need and so you target specific part breaks by attacking that part. Let's say the part you need is an Anjanath nose bone to make your first fire weapon. Logically, you'd think, okay, then I need to break his head and I'll get one of those. But that's not how it works here because in this game, part break rewards are random. They're just extra rolls on parts. What that means though is that you can get obscure parts like a tail that might not be weak to your damage type by breaking other body parts, easier body parts. And that the most efficient way to get specific materials from a given monster is actually to get as many materials as physically possible because they all roll randomly. And with non-specific part breaks, the best way to achieve that is, well, to just break as many parts on the monster as you can each hunt. Usually you can only get two part breaks maximum in a hunt because of the way that they have their health and the part health as well. But breaking two parts would mean that you get six rewards from one hunt, whereas if you don't do that, if you don't break any parts, you only get four. So that's a pretty massive increase. Past that, as far as farming monsters and materials, I got this handy dandy resource image put together by Theocree on Reddit that tells you reset timers for pretty much everything in the game and how they function. All this is extremely useful information so you can efficiently organize your walks for maximum monster intake, which is one of the weirdest sentences I've said in the video. I won't point out everything that's in the image, but I did want to put it up here just for a little bit so you could check it out yourself and take in all the useful information and use it to improve your own experience. One last little bonus tip is for the high movement speed restriction where the game asks if you are driving. You can actually reset this for a few seconds by going to the menu and opening the edit appearance button and immediately just canceling out, which will make the game stop tracking your speed for five to 10 seconds while still updating the area around you and it works out your new location. This is the same function that will happen if you close the game and reopen it while moving at high speeds too, just five to 10 second cycles of grabbing monsters to fight while at high speed before it realizes where you're actually doing. Disclaimer though, don't do this while driving. Just don't be dumb, okay? Do it while a passenger, do it on public transport. Never do it while driving, all right? With all that out of the way then, let's talk about specific weapons and armor to focus on using at this sort of mid-stage of the game. As far as weapons, elements matter above almost all else. Of course, there is a limit to this. If you have a grade five water weapon and a grade four fire weapon, even against a fire weak monster, the water weapon will actually probably do more damage just because the increase in raw from grade four to grade five is massive. But if you can, ideally you want to keep three or four weapons around the same upgrade level as much as possible. Great Jagras is a fantastic starting 
starting point for your water weapon. There are a number of early water weak monsters and Great Jagress are plentiful enough to hunt that you can actually get the materials to upgrade it relatively easily. Toby Kadachi weapons are your thunder element. There are a number of monsters that are weak to thunder, so this does quite a bit for you, though Toby is a bit scarcer than Jagras, so this one might be a bit hard to keep up to snuff unless you go out of your way to do so. Then once you reach Anjanath, an Anjanath weapon is incredible to have as the first fire element that you have access to, and it pretty much covers the vast majority of the remaining monster weaknesses that the other two don't, with the biggest exception being that you probably do want an ice weapon once you can make those, which of course will have to come from Legiana after you've beaten it. My personal recommendation, as I stated earlier, are sword and shields or light bow guns, but as long as you stick to those specific trees, those element types, those monsters to cover the multiple elements, you'll be getting the most out of whichever weapon type that you want to play. Moving on to armor then, this is where things get fun, because skills again work a little bit different in this game compared to normal Monster Hunter. Attack boost, for example, is purely additive in this, and with relatively low numbers, which actually makes it pretty meh, whereas burst in this game is percentage based, which makes it incredible, and lets it scale with you as you get more power. As a result, your sort of skill priority in this game is a bit different. The armor I'll be recommending here are to be generally useful, a strong set that should work for every weapon, though there are of course ways to specialize things for certain weapons. For example, Great Sword Special Skill is a massive, massive portion of their damage, so getting special boost to increase the damage and concentration to increase the gauge fill rate is really good, but it's not as good for the other weapons, which rely less on this for their damage, because there's just better ways to use those skill slots to complement their style. Early on in the game, you definitely want Kulu Helmet if you're using a melee weapon. Lock-on is invaluable. Pick the weak part with the lock-on, and then you can just swing like a maniac. As you enter the mid-game, though, we'll get lock-on from elsewhere, so the best mid-game helmet is Rathian. Two health boost, one poison attack. Of course, the poison attack doesn't matter, but you don't get it until grade 6 anyways. But the health boost is really big. Every rank of health boost is another 10 health maximum to your character. And before you ask, because yes, it does matter, potion healing actually does seem to scale with health boost, so a potion gives you 50 health when you have the base 100, but it gives you 65 health if you've got three ranks of health boost for 130 maximum health. As a result, 30% bonus health might as well mean you take 30% lower damage on a base health bar because the healing scales up. You can also do this with Pookie Pookie Helmet and get one rank of focus if you're a charging attack weapon, but it's much harder to upgrade a Pookie Helmet from its base quality than it is to just craft a Rathian Helmet, so it's up to you really. For chest piece in endgame, you want Rathalos, which I don't have unlocked yet, so I can't show you, but it is nuts. Before then though, you have two choices. If you are big on your special skill, again, Anjanath Chest gives two ranks of special boost, that's 15% increase to the damage of your special skill. But for most weapons, that is just a fraction of the damage that you will be doing in the whole hunt. So the one that I generally want to recommend more is actually the Great Jagras Chest Piece for one rank of Rising Tide, two ranks when you get it to grade six. This skill increases your raw attack at two different points in the hunt. With only one rank of the skill, which is what you get at grade two on the armor, when there are 50 seconds left in the hunt, you gain 30 raw. When there are 25 seconds left, you gain another 30 raw on top of that for 60 total bonus. That means that you hunt for 25 seconds with your base damage, 25 seconds with bonus 30 raw, and 25 seconds with 60 bonus raw, which averages out at, well, 30 bonus raw if you reach a full timer. One rank of attack boost for comparison is 20 raw, so Rising Tide actually works out to be better than that if you're using a full timer. Not to mention that you can time your special skill during that last 25 second window, which gives it a notably stronger boost than it would get from just a stable attack boost. In other words, offensively speaking, this is the best chess piece before Rathalos. For gloves, I highly recommend Rathian once you get there again. Lock on, again, is just incredible for melee weapons, and burst level one up to level two at grade six. Burst simply gives you a damage boost if you hit multiple attacks in a short period of time. This will activate for most weapons quite easily the way it works in this game, and the damage boost that it gives you is 5% per rank of the skill, which is really solid in this game, and it makes these gloves absolutely nasty good. For your waist, I would generally recommend Palumu, actually. This gives you one rank of Divine Blessing, up to two ranks at grade six. Divine Blessing rank one is a 30% activation chance to reduce the damage of an attack against you by 50%. That means a third of the times that you get hit by a monster strong enough to one-shot you, it won't one-shot you. Especially against harder monsters because of that, this is a lifesaver in the most literal sense, and it can genuinely save you money as a result of the way that the game works around health. Then for legs, it's pretty open to personal choice. Kuliaku legs are two ranks of critical eye once you level it up a bit more, which is great, obviously. Anjanath legs go up to two ranks of peak performance as you upgrade them, which is weirdly good in this game, by the way, because most of the time you're either full health or dead, really, or Rathian legs for even more health boost and the survivability that that will give you. And that just about does it, really, as far as today goes. I feel like that was quite a lot of information, but having recently hit, worked my way 
way through and then eventually surpassed the mid-game wall of Monster Hunter Now, I thought it would be a good idea to share all of my advice with you, what I learned along the way, what I know now that I wish I did before throwing all of my potions away, and quite simply how to sort of just get good at what this game wants you to do. Not necessarily get better as a player, but get better just understanding how to overcome these walls. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope some of these tips will help make your journey in Monster Hunter Now more fun. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye